consultation today. Your safety comes first with the First Alert Radar Network. First just got faster. Trust meteorologist Emily Active for your first alert. Live from Augusta, you're watching News 12 at 6 o'clock. Good evening, my name is Hallie Turner and I'm super excited to be joining the weekend crew. I moved to Augusta about two years ago to tell your stories every week and I've enjoyed it so much. I decided to stick around for more. Over the next few weeks, you'll see some familiar faces on the desk. I've got some friends getting married, so that's taken me to different places and states, but I'll be back around every weekend after June 16th. But like I said, I'm excited to be here with the weekend crew and that means we're sending things over to First Alert Meteorologist Emily Acton for Memorial Day. And Emily, that is on Monday, so we know, you know, when I came in this morning, it was raining cats and dogs, is what we say in the South. So kind of tell us what we're expecting, more of that as we break out the barbecue grills tomorrow. Well, first off, welcome to the weekend team. Thank Super you. excited to have you here, Thank so you. it'll be a great time. Um, very excited. So want to take a look at what we can expect throughout our weekend. Right now, here's a look at Clark's Hill Lake. Beautiful conditions on the lake right now, and uh, there's some people out there boating, enjoying Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully, everybody's uh, doing it safely as well. Temperatures have cooled off a little bit because we saw some rainfall this afternoon, and that kind of helped us keep a little bit cooler temperatures. 80 is what we're seeing right now. Feels like 84 though, but that heat index is nowhere near what it could be. And uh, we'll show you that in just a little bit. But some showers and thunderstorms across the southeast not impacting us here in the CSRA anymore. Again, we had a line, a broken line of showers and thunderstorms move through, and that cloud cover has moved out along with it. So good news is we're seeing sunny sky conditions and uh, calm sky conditions, and that's going to last throughout the overnight hours and throughout the morning tomorrow, but we could still see a few isolated showers tomorrow afternoon, and I'll have a check on what all you can expect for tomorrow and your Memorial Day coming up soon, Hallie. Thanks, Emily. New at 6, the McDuffie County Coroner's Office has identified the victim of a deadly motorcycle crash on I-20 this morning. They say 73-year-old Edward Hyde from Montgomery, Alabama, died at the scene after his motorcycle traveling eastbound went off the road into the traffic barrier cables on the westbound side of the interstate. No autopsy has been scheduled yet, but GSP and the Coroner's Office are investigating. And Memorial Day is Monday, but before we start the holiday, we remember and honor those fallen U.S. military personnel. Places like the Augusta Regional Airport are kicking off the weekend with the Augusta Air Show. Audrey Dick Herbert joins us live in the newsroom now. And Audrey, you were at the air show this morning. What do people have to say about the first day of the show? The rain didn't stop people from coming out today. Some even came from outside of Georgia. Lots of people gathered at the airport and around it to watch the air show this morning. Even outside of where the main event was held, people were sitting on top of their cars, sitting up chairs, and pulling out their binoculars to watch the planes fly by, such as the Growler team, the Navy Legacy Flight, the Remax Parachute team, and of course, the F-22 Raptor demo team. Aside from watching the air show, there was also music for people to enjoy, multiple vendors to buy food and drinks from, and even some Augusta Air Show merchandise. Uh, well, you know, I kind of encourage you to get earmuffs on the way in. Uh, we didn't hear that, so, no. you know, okay. just trying to let it go. <laughs> Played the long, uh, but great, great sound. It really shook yeah. your core. The air show will also be happening tomorrow with gates opening at 9 a.m. and the first flight performance at noon. Thank you, Audrey. Now, this holiday travel weekend is already breaking records. The TSA said it screened a single high of 2.9 million airline passengers yesterday. CBS's Christian Benavides reports on the numbers behind the travel rush during this Memorial Day weekend. Gridlock outside Los Angeles International Airport Saturday as millions of Americans travel to their destination this Memorial Day weekend. Long lines at Seattle Tacoma International. It's chaotic here. It's, it's absolutely chaos. FlightAware tracked more than 8,000 U.S. flights delayed Friday, and the FAA is about 3,000 air traffic controllers short. The agency hired 1,500 last year with a goal of another 1,800 this year. The nation's airlines expect to fly 271 million passengers this summer, up more than 6% from last year's record pace. We do have alternate strategies in the event that they do have a day or two where they don't have proper staffing, that we, we can mitigate that. 
The vast majority will drive to their holiday getaway this weekend. Gas prices are about the same as last year at $3.57 a gallon nationally. AAA expects this holiday travel weekend to break a 20-year record. Nearly 44 million are traveling at least 50 miles between Thursday and Monday. Mary Harrelson is driving with her husband, her sister, and their five young kids from Georgia to Pennsylvania. We are having to drive through D.C., so we're going to hit some traffic, but we're ready for it. We mentally prepared ourselves. Monday is expected to be the busiest travel day on the backside of a holiday weekend. The unofficial start to the summer travel season officially underway. Cristian Benavides, CBS News. Now, severe weather in Texas in the Midwest could disrupt flights this weekend. And back at the CSRA, Aiken Aunt and Aiken, they honored and held a Memorial Day parade this morning. The Memorial Day parade in Aiken County started at 10 this morning over on Park Avenue and Lawrence Street. Students and veterans participated in the parade honoring fallen U.S. military personnel. We spoke to a veteran at the parade about his feelings seeing all the people out and what brought him there. The parade and honoring our country. Everybody should come out. It's a wonderful place in Aiken and we love being here. The people up here just tend to come out every year and you can see a lot of people do that here. So we're just grateful for having them too. Now, all around the country, events are being held this weekend to mark Memorial Day as well. And looking towards Monday, around the region, there are more Memorial Day events planned. A memorial tolling of the boat service in Aiken, which will be at the VFW Post 5877 at noon, followed by Memorial Day service at 2. And over in Evans at 11, there's a remembrance ceremony at the Memorial Gardens Park. And in Augusta, there will be a 5K remembrance run honoring the fallen service members. That's taking place at 8.30 in the morning at the Lake Homestead Trailhead. And President Biden celebrated graduates from the U.S. Military Academy today. The president's commencement speech spoke of the class of 2024's accomplishments. Over 1,000 members graduated today. Biden praised the newly minted second lieutenants for their dedication to protecting the country and discussed how the armed forces are continuing to shape the world. Thanks to the U.S. Armed Forces, we're doing what only America can do. As the indispensable nation, the world's only superpower, and the leading democracy in the world. Never forget America is the strongest when we lead, not only by our example of our power, but by the power of our example. Afterwards, Biden stood for more than an hour, shaking each graduate's hand and returning their salute. And today marks four years since the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was today, back in 2020, when, office, when police officer Derek Chauvin kneeled on Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. The encounter was caught on video, sparking nationwide protests calling for change. Chauvin was found guilty of unintentional murder and manslaughter in 2021. He was sentenced to 22 years in prison. And an American tourist who was facing jail time in Turks and Caicos after bringing... Well, looking at weather for the rest of our evening, looking dry, so that's good conditions if you have any outdoor plans. We'll cool off after sunset into those 70s and then dipping into those 60s for the overnight lows. But I'll have a check on your Memorial Day forecast and your pool forecast coming up. Every time you visit... USA. Taking a live look at Hartsville-Jackson International Airport in Atlanta, TSA says five of its ten busiest travel days have happened since May 16th. And Memorial Day, with the weekend coming up, that number, that number is not expected to slow down. But the question is, Emily, is the rain supposed to slow down? Uh, we could still see some rain in our area, not in the overnight tonight, so that's some good news. We have a line of showers and thunderstorms move through, and I think that that's going to be it for our Saturday, but we're not quite done with the rainfall just yet for our weekend, unfortunately. But hey, it cooled us down a little bit. We're sitting in those lower 80s right now at 83, so uh, conditions have, uh, again, cooled down significantly for us. Still seeing plenty of sunshine, though, as those showers have moved out of our area. There's still some activity going on in the state of Alabama. 
Alabama and really southern Georgia as well. But us here in the CSRA, we are looking dry and clear. You can see that cloud cover has gone away with it. So good news is not expecting any more rain for the CSRA for the rest of our overnight hours or really for our evening and overnight tonight. We're going to stay pretty mild, cooling off into those upper 60s for the overnight lows. Plenty of sunshine for our Sunday, but that could lead to some afternoon showers and thunderstorms possible throughout really the later afternoon, early evening hours for us. Kind of similar to what we saw today, but not as widespread. But then once we get into our Memorial Day, that's when those rain chances will ramp up a little bit. We could see a line of showers move through a little bit after midday, and then we could see some more later on in the evening for us, unfortunately, for Memorial Day. So higher chances of rainfall there. But something else I want to point out, very warm temperatures. Again, we are sitting in those lower 80s now, and that's due to the rain. Tomorrow, probably not going to see as much rain, so the feels like temperature out there is going to be in those upper 90s. So very, very warm day tomorrow. Make sure you're staying hydrated and have that sunscreen on. Same can be said for our Monday, but not as intense. We'll only be in those lower 90s. That's going to be due to rainfall. Again, it's going to help cool us down. And th again, this is the feels like temperature. Actual temperature will be a little bit lower than that. But again, for your Memorial Day, a couple afternoon showers, maybe lasting into the evening. Temperatures will only warm up to those upper 80s due to those showers and thunderstorms. Once we get into next week, though, looking a lot better for us, especially on Tuesday. Sunny sky conditions, high temperatures will reach those lower 90s, and it will be in those upper 80s for Wednesday, mostly sunny. But hey, we're cooling down a little bit for Thursday. We'll be in those middle 80s. That's going to continue into our Friday and weekend. Check out the overnight lows, though. That's what I'm really holding on to. Right around 60, might even dip into those upper 50s some nights, especially Friday morning and Saturday morning. But we just have to get through the rainfall, the possible rainfall that we could see tomorrow, and then more likely again for our Memorial Day. But after that, we are looking dry and a nice cool down for the middle and end of next week, Hallie. I'm looking forward to next week in this forecast. I think it's looking great. Those middle 80s. I love it. Pictures. I middle think that looks great. Yeah. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> A family in eastern northern Carolina is attempting to set a new Guinness World Record for the highest number of combined ages in a, fa in a family. Olivia Doles has a report. Imagine having siblings ranging from age 63 to 85. Of 13 siblings, so of course, you know, we have all types of personalities, but basically we're all a bunch of fun people. The Bell family experiences that daily, especially with all 13 siblings alive to this day, with the oldest who just celebrated her 85th birthday back in March. It was awesome. She was a little queen for the day, walked in on red carpet with her crown on. And she has 13 children, so they really go all out when they have her birthday parties. With a family close-knit like this one, Angela Greenfield Burris, who is one of the nieces, had the idea to get the family together and... We're going to go ahead and try to set this record. And so, great, I already had the video footage, I had the photos, so I submitted everything online. Currently, 12 of the 13 siblings live in the state of North Carolina, but they all grew up outside of Duplin County. And when Alfonso Bell heard that the process of setting a record started... It's joy. I like the idea she came up there. I was thinking about something like that when my baby sister turned 60. I said, it had to be some kind of record or something like that. But other than setting a new record, the most important part for all of them is being a happy family. We love to think positive, have a positive outlook on life, and just enjoy life and be thankful for it. Now the Guinness World Record emailed them at the beginning of April saying the application was accepted. Now they wait three months to see if they set a new record. And a coffee shop with a unique business model is getting rave reviews. A look at what makes the female empowered coffee shop different after the break. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. One coffee shop in Los Angeles brewed up a unique business plan built on female empowerment. Laurie Perez shows us how the company's roots started in Mexico and ended up in Southern California. Every bean for LA's Cafecita coffee is roasted slowly 
and scientifically. Knowing when to smell for steam and when to smell for smoke. La Cafecita owner Natalie Webb says what makes them all the sweeter is where they come from. Women make up 70% of the manual labor on the coffee farms, but are far less represented as decision makers or as owners. Um, and a lot of that is women can't own land a lot of times. It's in their husband's names and their father's names. This is an estate in Chiapas, Mexico. Web sources exclusively from sustainable, women-owned farms and co-ops like this one. Formerly an international human rights lawyer, in 2020 she decided to take her advocacy in a different direction. Women's rights is, is so important to so many people and they haven't really, people don't know how to help. So I think having companies that are able to um, let customers make an impact just by drinking your cup of coffee, which you're going to drink anyways in the morning, um, choosing brands that align with your values, I think really resonates with a lot of people. She says when Cafecita launched, they were the only roaster in the country sourcing exclusively from women-owned farms and remain the only one focused on women's empowerment. A percentage of every sale goes to supporting women's nonprofits around the world. And there's another female figure Cafecita supports, Mother Earth. Here we wanted everything to be sustainable. So we have solar and all the materials that we use are 100% compostable. Cafecita's trailer uses 100% renewable energy, as does its roastery. It's a green, women-led, women-grown cup of joe. Getting to a point where you can actually deliver not just a cup of coffee, but deliver a message with that cup of coffee, I find that super cool. You can find Cafecita coffee at events and cafes around Los Angeles or online. Lori Perez, CBS News, Los Angeles. A popular attraction along the Tidal Basin in Washington, D.C. is gone. Stumpy, the cherry tree, has been removed. The tree was famous and on calendars, t-shirts, and more. Stumpy is one of more than 100 trees that were already scheduled to be removed as work on the Tidal Basin seawall continues. Sports is coming up after the break. Tidal Max got you. giving back and Silver Bluffs Teron Jackson has been for the past three years. The former Coastal Carolina and current defensive end for the Eagles put on another kids camp at the Bluff. More than 70 kids took part in the same drills that Jackson once participated in on the same field. It was even more special this year when he had his former coach alongside him to lead the next generation of Bulldogs at his own camp. Jackson has come a long way since he suited up in silver, but days like this in the middle of OTAs is just a reminder of why he put on the pads in the first place. Man, I love it, man. Coach Ains actually kind of convinced me to come back and start playing football because, you know, I kind of started off playing basketball, and my sophomore year I came back. And, uh, man, Coach Hayes, he did a lot for me, man. He used to pick me up from uh, home, you know, whenever I didn't have a ride for summer workouts, come here, and we'll pass out on the field running 100 and 110. But, you know, it was all those good experiences, man. And, you know, he's the right type of person that you want to have as a head coach. So, you know, I'm happy. Teron Jackson's a, a big part of Silver Bluff. I was able to coach him when I coached here earlier and uh, love him. He's one of my favorite players, my favorite students. My wife taught him. He just, he's just one of one of a kind. So having a third third camp in a row, third annual camp here, special. <laughs> Me coming back as first year head coach, when he called and said, can we get it set up? I said, absolutely. Jackson brought a few of his teammates from Coastal to help out alongside Silver Bluff coach Matt Hayes. A couple of college athletes from the Silver Bluff program were also on hand, like Christian Eccles, who's prepping for his first season at Charleston Southern. Over at Westside, DeMarco Middleton, Levante Ivory, and Bobby Blackwell all signed letters of intent to play at the next level. The trio is part of one of the most decorated teams to play ever at Westside, earning three consecutive state championships and an 81-14 and record over the last three seasons. Middleton will head to USC Sakahachi. Ivory will take his talents to Florida State in Tennessee, and Blackwell will go to Putin Parker College. And scientists have discovered a possible habitable planet about 40 light years away. In a study, they said it is a smaller than Earth, but larger than Venus. It falls on a habitable zone where liquid and water can possibly
possibly and possibly life can exist. It orbits the small star in the Pisces constellation. Unfortunately, getting there would take about 225,000 years. And our fastest spaceships right now, Emily. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody's going there anytime soon. But I don't know if I would either. I, I don't like that. I like Earth. Yeah, it's a red planet, and so that just makes me feel like it's really <laughs> hot there. And what I, about just, you, Alyssa? I, yeah, I mean, it looks nice. I just, How? It does not How does look, it look nice? nice. I don't know. It just looks fun. I, <laughs> yeah, I got nothing about it. I don't think I could get in a, a space uh, spacecraft and like go up there and float around. Like I'm already that's terrible on planes. Getting me in an aircraft like that's enough. space, absolutely. My nerves are shot after they a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I totally agree. I am I'm good to stay here. I know how to predict the weather here. I don't know what the weather's like over there on that planet. So then there's questions if there's aliens. Yeah, yep. we're yeah, going to have to. That's a big one, Holly. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to look into it. But hey, let's look at the forecast one more time before we go. We could see an isolated shower or two tomorrow afternoon. Not expecting it to be as widespread as what we saw today or even yesterday. But Monday could see a few more showers and thunderstorms come through for the afternoon and again for the evening hours. So if you have Memorial Day plans, make sure you have that first alert weather app handy where you can check the radar and see if any storms are coming your way. Because again, they're going to be scattered like in pattern. But hey, it's looking dry for next week and temperatures will drop into the middle 80s. Don't go anywhere. There's more news, weather, and sports. All new to now News 12 at 6 o'clock. I mean,